Hello there guys, Billabo10000 here, bringing you episode 3 of Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And in this episode, we're going to be taking on the Bottle Grotto. Let's go inside, because this is level 2, Bottle Grotto. So first things first, we want to head straight into the next room. So we've got some magic powder that we can use to light up the area as we normally would. We can't really open that key door over there because we don't have a key with us. So instead, we have to defeat the Stalfos. And, you know, not too difficult, I might add. Alright, once we've got that key, I'm actually going to go and open this door over here. Because, you know, I like being different and not opening the door that was actually in the, you know, the area where the key was. So, let's light this area up. Nothing actually happens, I just wanted to light it up. Come through here. May as well light this area up as well. And then we want to get the Rock's Feather out, because... As you know, very useful. We've got a stone beak now, which is, uh, I guess, somewhat helpful. It's not really the thing that I wanted to get. I didn't realize that would have been down in this area, but you know, it's fine. It's an item. We need to relight the fire of this area, which is hilarious how we've already almost wasted half of our magic powder. Good job, Billy. Good, good job, Billy. Well done. All right, let's... Wait for this guy to move past, and we'll move back inside here. Well, we can't go downwards, so we may as well go right. In this room, we've got these. And we also have this new enemy type. Not very difficult, but you know, a little bit threatening. We've also got a small key, which we can use to open a locked door, which will open the door that is... Oh, well... It will open the door in this location. We need to actually hit this because we need that to go up so that this one will go down. And then we can go in here. In here, we have a mimic enemy. These enemies basically move in the same way as Link. They are shy guys, if you couldn't actually tell. Basically, our job is to hit them on the side. And... That's basically how you're meant to deal with them. We also have now got pieces of power. Now, the mimic enemies are actually kind of difficult. I, I struggle with them a lot. We've also got the compass now. So if we press pause, then we're going to see a lot of chests in this area. Yes, you know, I don't need you to tell me this about the compass every time we get it. Okay, one floor, but there's also more than one floor. So that's fun. I believe... Which button is select for- oh, look at that, it's cute. Okay. I don't actually know what button select is for us, because I am playing this on a keyboard, but, you know. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to head down this way, and I'm actually going to open up this bit, because I want to see what's down here. Okay, so this is where we would collect more magic powder. So, press that, open this up, we've got another small key, brilliant. Ever so helpful. And if we hit this, and we just do a quick jump here, jump here, and then jump here, we're actually going to be back in the room that we were meant to be in. And they're gone. So that key over there that we need to go and collect is collectible. It's possible to collect. Yay. <laughs> All right, go through here. And we can head back towards that area and collect the key. So pretty helpful, pretty good, pretty useful. All right, once we've got the key, we can actually head back through that area and we can continue on with the dungeon. Very simple so far. The dungeon is a lot longer than the last dungeon, so this one might actually take the full episode, but who knows. We still can't break any of those. All right, we've got some shield enemies, which means I do want to get my shield out. Shield. Smash. And full health. Let's open up the door. And in here, we just got some keys. We've got the, the wall guy. No, I didn't want to do that. 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 I didn't want to... That's better. That's also better. We want to push this one forwards, and then we want to push this one forwards, and it's going to open up a secret staircase. Alright, then we want to get the Rock's Feather on, because the Rock's Feather is basically very important for these 2D segments, because it's the only way you can actually jump, and you know, jumping's kind of important when you don't want to die. So, we're going to come through here, climb up here, and we're in a completely new segment of the area. Okay, first things first, I want to actually use my magic powder on this, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do that. And then, I'm just gonna head into the next room, because there's nothing in here. And we're in the boss's room. Oh, not the boss's room, the mini-boss's room. And the mini-boss is dead, because we had a power-up on our sword. 
That was hilariously easy. And we've also got our passageway back to the beginning of the dungeon, should we need it. All right. So now that we've done that, we're pretty much in a really good position. But we still haven't got our... Oh, wow. I forgot that existed. Oh, my. But yeah, we're in a pretty good position. That's what I wanted to say. The good thing is, no matter what, I think we'll be able to pass this dungeon pretty easily. We've got a map now, which is even better. And if you look at the map, it's actually shaped like a bottle. Kind of hilarious, kind of funny. All right, once we're through here, let's jump around there, smash you. Wow, this looks pretty heavy. You won't be able to lift it from just of our hands. I wish that didn't trigger whenever I touched a bottle. <laughs> you got 20 rupees. Joy. The sarcasm in that is great. I love it. Okay, these guys you can only hurt, I believe, once the powder has been sprinkled into the flames. And they're gone. With that, we've got the power bracelet. The power bracelet can actually let us pick up pots and stones, which pretty much opens a ton of pathways for us. So first things first, we can pick up this one, if we really want to. Like so. Or we can, you know, do this. We can just start chucking pots everywhere. And there's also the pot in the very beginning of the dungeon that we can pick up, which is always helpful. We've got another key from this one, which is always helpful. And if we hit this one and we head down this way, we actually can come out here, which is very helpful. We can also cross down to this side, but I don't actually need to yet. And we can cross over here, where the pretty much the rest of the dungeon is. There's not too much left of the dungeon to do, thank goodness. It is a bit longer than the original, but you know, uh, not as long as everyone thought it would be. This enemy is a bit weird. You have to actually kill it with pots. You can't actually hurt it normally unless you have bombs, so it's a bit frustrating. I think this actually leads to the final part of the dungeon, which we technically don't need to go to just yet. Instead, we need to collect that pot and use that to lower this down. Chuck the pot, move across. Yep, we're in the final location. We don't need to be here just yet, so we need to go back this way. There's actually a few areas we still haven't been to, so let's go and search for them now. So first things first, we want to get back out of this room, so let's just try and ignore the enemies for the most part and just get through them. Now, this room is special because you need to kill these enemies in a certain order, and I need to kind of look that up, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to first get that Pole's voice. That's what they're called, not like... Yeah. So, push that. Push this. Pick up a pot. And that didn't work. Well, that's annoying. So, we need to come back... Oh, no, we need to... Don't tell me we have to, like... Freaking restart the entire thing. Oh, no. Okay, thank God. No, get away. Get away. I don't want to fight you right now, or you. No. God damn it. I need them out of the way of each other, because if they're in the way, I can't... Okay, you. Then, then you. There we go. We've got that nightmare key, and now we can actually go and face the boss. But first things first... Uh, I guess you're wondering where those stairs go. Well, if you've been paying attention to the dungeon layout, you should actually already know. First things first, Mario enemies. They're kind of popular in this game for some reason. Wait for the piranha plant to leave. Jump on the Goomba if you really want to. Collect the heart. Ow. I wonder if they always drop hearts. Yeah, they do. That's good. And if you come out here, you actually end up back in this room. So it's not like it's a very big sort of uh, stretch from where you actually were. But, you know, it's good enough that I think it provides some entertainment value. So what we want to do before anything else is we want to do that. We want to jump here. We also want to head back to the beginning of the dungeon just quickly. Because there is that one chest in the very starting room that I want to go and collect. I think it only has like rupees or something in it. But you know, just the fact that it's there just means that it's there to be collected. And I want to collect it. So let's open it up. And we've got 50 rupees. Which is always helpful because we need these rupees for something shopping that we're going to be doing after in the next... Uh, this episode actually. Yeah, it'll probably be this episode. So, now we want to head back this way, we want to head back, and we want to go to the boss arena, so really nothing too dangerous. 
Just, okay, r r I don't need this text to pop up every time I try to move something. It gets kind of annoying. So, want to pick that up. Move across here. Come back through here. You can't actually do anything with those piranha plants, sadly. They are just there forever. But we can just keep killing the Goombas if we need to. Alright, cross. And they actually do work exactly like Mario Piranha Plants in that they actually don't come up if you're standing on them, which is cool. So, I want to head down this way, I want to head across here. And, you know, are, are you kidding me? Are you... Game, come on. Stop being annoying. <laughs> we're just going to head off this way and we're going to head back in this direction. Because now all we really have to do is, one, kill you, two, kill you, three, kill you. And with this, that's going to make the boss battle a lot easier. So, let's head back this way, let's head down here. I believe we're going to keep that power for the entire time that we're around, so that's good. Pick you up, move across, drop down, break you, go up. Definitely going to need the rocks further quickly, so let's just quickly pop that on. And then we're going to face the next boss battle of the game. It is Genie. Ho, ho, ho. I'm your bad guy this time. Ho, ho, ho. The Genie is a little bit terrifying in that, you know, he's a Genie. Yeah, you can't hurt me so long as I have my bottle. Can I not pick up the bottle? I wanted to pick up the bottle. <laughs> kind of. Okay, I want to avoid the flames. Eventually he'll run out, and then I believe we can hit the bottle. And then he can't move. See, your little sword won't break this bottle, but you know, the item that this dungeon is known for can. So basically it's all about just rinsing and repeating. And then once the bottle is broken, we have to just attack him and destroy him. So nothing too dangerous, nothing too difficult. Just make sure to avoid the flames, and you should be okay. It's really not a difficult battle, but I don't think a lot of the battles in this game are surprisingly difficult. So... There's only a few battles in this game, I would say, that are genuinely very difficult, so it's okay. You can't hurt me as long as I have my bottle. Yeah, I know, we kind of heard you say that about 15 times already, but you know, it's okay. I don't hold it against you. Oh, he actually hit us that time, that's good. Not good for us, but I mean, you know what? Good for him, he's aiming. He's learning. And his bottle is broken, which means... Why? You broke my bottle? Why? You you make me hopping mad. So now it's all about, you know, just hitting him about 15 times. No, come on. Are you kidding me? I was hitting him. I was hitting him and it didn't work. That's rude. Well, here we go. You make me mad. Uh, you, you're upset. Uh, are you upset, my friend? You should not be upset. You should be very... You know, oh, he's getting difficult, he's getting he's getting injured. He's definitely getting injured. I think the more they do that, the more injured they get. Come on, just keep slashing here, it's okay. I think one more hit should do it. Yep, there we go. And with that, the genie that was hopping mad has been defeated, and we have obtained a new heart container. With that, we can just go in and collect the next instrument of the siren. I can't really tell what that is. You've got the conch horn. All right, we've got a horn. Brilliant. And with that, guys, that is the end of this episode of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. If you enjoyed the series so far, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And in the next episode, the prairie. Prairie. The prairie is waiting. That's where we'll be heading next. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye, guys.